everyone. Thanks for joining us for today's training on Canvas Basics. This is an introductory session on the Canvas platform to help get you started. My name is Samantha and I am the Instructional Application Support Technician and I'm joined by my colleague Gus, who is the Operational Expert. Uh, this training will cover how to navigate and around Canvas as well as your various account settings. We'll also talk about the three major uses of the learning management system. So how you can use Canvas to communicate with your students, how you can add content, including files, assignments, discussions, and quizzes, and how to use Canvas to grade student work and review those grades. We'll then end with how to get additional help and support moving forward. With that, let us jump in and log into Canvas. You can access Canvas at the canvas.ucsb.edu website. Click the UCSB users login button and log in with your net ID and password. Do note that during the Canvas transition over the 22-23 academic year, students will also be able to access Canvas from their Gaucho Space uh, course dashboard. Uh, so either way, you'll be able to access Canvas from canvas.ucsb.edu, this main website here, or you can access Canvas from the Gaucho Space block that'll be added to the course dashboard. So with that, take a moment, log into Canvas and follow along with us today. And my uh, colleague here, Gus, will go over general navigation and account settings. Alrighty. So um, leaving off or picking up where Samantha left off, uh, once you successfully logged into Canvas, you'll be brought to your Canvas dashboard page, which is what we see here. Um, this is going to show you courses um, you know, that you have access to, either as an instructor or as a student, or whatever role you've been added in any course. Um, to start our introduction into Canvas, I'm going to run over the global navigation, which is found on the left side of any Canvas page just here. Um, and I'll start uh, just at the top and work our way down. So the first one here is account settings. And when you click on this, um, it'll actually pop out and then you've got a series of account settings uh, nested below. The first one here, notifications. This is going to control any notifications you get from Canvas. So UCSB's Canvas will pull in your UCSB email address, whatever is associated in your, net, your um, campus identity system record. It'll pull that email in, the primary email, and populate it here. And then running down this list is any type of notification that can be generated from Canvas. So due dates, files added to a course, announcements, late grading, a new reply to a discussion, um, scheduling changes, any of these alerts um, that would be generate an email um, are all controlled here. If you find that you're getting too many of a particular notification and you want to change how frequently uh, those notifications are sent, you would come to this page and then locate the uh, specific notification you want to change and then click on the icon to the right here. And this gives you the option to change that particular notification um, to if you want to be notified immediately when, so say the due date is changed, do you want it you know, at the end of the day once? So if you get multiple due dates changed, you just want a summary of all those types of notifications at once during the day, once weekly, or if you want that notification completely turned off. Um, so you can dial that in for any particular notification listed here. And this is primarily by default just the account setting, so it'll apply to all your courses. However, you can use this drop-down menu and select a particular course and dial in your specific notification settings to a course. So if you wanna get more notifications about a specific course um, and less about another, you can dial that in on a course by course basis. So that's our notification settings. The next one down is profile. Um, the big one with profile is gonna be profile picture. So this, uh, icon here, if you click on the pencil icon, 
that'll give you the option to upload a picture, take a picture. If you have a Gravatar account, you can link that. Um, and then the other aspect of the profile settings is you can click on edit profile. Uh, you could insert a quick biography here, and then you can also um, add external links. So if your department has maybe a bio page for you, or you have a research group you're a part of, and you want to link those here, or maybe a journal you're a part of, um, any of those kind of things that you want to link out to. The next one down, files. Um, this is a quick way to get to, um, first, you have a My Files area where you can upload files directly into Canvas that are tied to just your account. Um, so an easy way to access files maybe you're going to be using frequently in Canvas courses and you want to have them attached to your profile. And then below that, you'll have um, folders for each course you have access to. And this allows you to get to any files that have been uploaded to those courses um, through this files area. So rather than going into the course itself, if you want a quick way to get to files, um, just at the course level, you can do that here. All right. So after files, we get to settings. Um, settings is really where I think most of us, when we think of account settings, um, these are the settings we think about. Um, primarily your name, how it's displayed, um, settings like pronouns, um, this is where all that is housed, um, but you don't actually change this in Canvas. Um, Canvas is going to pull all of that information from the UCSB Identity Management System and populate it into Canvas. So, you know, your full name um, is going to pull, you know, your full legal name listed in identity, um, your display name will pull your uh, commonly used first name, your preferred first name. So I go by Gus, um, but my full first name is Augustus. So my full name is Augustus Wood, but in my display name, it would be Gus Wood because I've set my preferred first name to Gus. Likewise with pronouns, that would also be set in the identity management system, and that would come in here. Um, and just again to point out how you would change that, it's this im.ucsb.edu. Um, you would click profile and settings. And once you open that and log in with your net ID and password, you would have those fields to change your uh, preferred first name, pronouns, all that stuff. Um, on the right here, you'll also see the, the email that we pull in from identity uh, associated here. You may have two emails. Um, in some cases, you may wanna, if you see a second email and you only want one, you can trash one of them will be a trash can icon you can select to delete one, um, but you'll need one associated with your account um, just so you can get those notifications sent to it. In the event that you don't want notifications um, displayed in Canvas, there's this inbox feature um, and you only want them um, to be sent just to your email and not into the inbox feature, which Samantha is gonna to touch on, you can click on this option to disable the conversations inbox, um, and then everything will just come uh, straight to your email. And then the other settings I'll point out just at the bottom here, um, these are all settings pertaining to accessibility. So, you know, accessing the website um, according to whatever needs you have. So if you need, say, a screen reader or you need um, some change in how Canvas is displaying, um, all those settings that are available are here and you can toggle those on as needed. So those are our account settings. The next one down, shared content. Um, this is a place where instructors can send one another content um, to their accounts. So in Gaucho space, if you wanted to share account, the primary way you would do that is to add someone to a course and that then they could import materials from that course into their course. Canvas makes it a little easier. Um, you can actually send someone uh, something you build in Canvas. So if I create a quiz or an assignment, I can send that to another instructor and they would get it in their shared content area of their account. Um, here I've sent you know, an assignment. Um, to Charles Gaucho here, and Charles could then go here and then import it into their course. Um, so a nice handy way of how you can go about sharing materials uh, directly with another person in Canvas. 
Next one down, QR for mobile login. Um, this, if I proceed right here, will generate a QR code. I can then use my smartphone um, camera feature, take a picture of the QR code, and then it'll open the Canvas app and log me in using my authentication online. Um, quick, easy way just to get into the, the mobile app. And the mobile app, um, you know, we've heard a lot of students really enjoy it. it, helps them keep track of their classes and just quick and easy access, um, pretty intuitive using the Canvas app. The next one down, global announcements. Um, primarily what announcements will be displayed um, as a global announcement in Canvas are gonna be things like maintenance windows um, or just changes to the platform. So here we've got a current one about the turning on MFA duo for both Gaucho Space and Canvas. Um, you know, other ones, you know, if Canvas is going to be down for maintenance, um, we would post that. If a, a linked service, like something like Gaucho Cast or Gradescope or Nectar, um, if any of those kind of linked services to Canvas are going to have any outages, we would also display those as global announcements. So that covers our account settings, and I'm just going to work our way down. Um, we touched on the dashboard initially. That's what you see when you log in, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, the next one now on courses. Um, this is how you see you know, all the courses you have access to. So on the dashboard page, you know, I see these two courses, but I also have this courses, page, courses tab, and I can click on all courses here. And then I actually see there's other courses I have access to. I've actually just starred these two courses, and those are what are showing on my dashboard. So as you can imagine, you know, over a, a number of quarters using Canvas, your dashboard could become quite very cluttered with courses. So you may want to parse that down to just the courses maybe that are going on in the current quarter or just ones that you're accessing frequently. Um, so you would come to this all courses area and just only star the ones that you want to see on your dashboard. I'm leaving these others unstarred and then they won't appear on my dashboard. So, you know, again, as you accumulate more courses, you may want to parse it down this way. And then if I ever need to get access to these courses that don't appear on my dashboard, I would do that by, again, clicking courses, all courses, and then I see all my courses. Next one down, calendar. Um, this is you know, a calendar view of all the due dates, all the dates associated in any course you have access to. So it's not just you know, the calendar for one course, it's any course that you're the instructor for, any course that a student you know, is a student in, they would see all the due dates, all the dates associated with the course in a calendar view. So here I've got um, an assignment, um, you know, I see the title for the assignment, I can jump right into the course itself, see the due date. Um, this one I've got, uh, you know, a forum discussion, I've got, you know, the details of the discussion, and then I, the due date I can jump right in. Um, so down below, you know, another assignment, and this one's a quiz, you know, quickly jump into those from a calendar view. Uh, we found that this is really helpful for students um, just so that they can see on a calendar, you know, are they keeping apprised of due dates and things associated with their course? And it, you know, helps them plan and make sure things aren't falling through the cracks. As an instructor, you know, not used quite in the same way, but a great way for you to kind of see how the, the course is laying out in a calendar view. Um, the next one down, Inbox. Um, again, Samantha is going to touch on that when we go over communication. Uh, below that, we've got history. Uh, this is just a running list of recent pages I've visited in my account. Um, kind of helpful if you know you're jumping around Canvas and then you think, oh, you know, I was on this one page and I need that information. I can't remember how I got there. Um, you can use this recent history just to kind of jump back to something you were recently accessed. The next one, Commons. Um, this is a area that's associated with Canvas as a whole, not just UCSB, but um, anyone who uses the Canvas platform. 
Um, it's a place where instructors can publish materials to what's called the Canvas Commons. Um, and then it's available for anyone to bring in and use in their own course. So, you know, it ranges from simple pages to assignments to whole templated courses that you could bring in, um, you know, tweak for your own needs and apply to your course um, as you see fit. So, you know, there's no reason you need to start from scratch. There's a lot of much um, publicly available resources in the Commons if you're interested. Um, again, you would just click Authorize here. This is just saying that your account is going to go into the Commons space. Um, and then you, you know, have this option to search the Commons and see all the things that are available there. Um, the last one here, help, um, we're going to touch on that at the end, just how you can get help the various ways, both from our office um, at UCSB and then, you know, some other Canvas, um, Canvas's own help avenues. But to stick with the navigation theme, next I'm going to jump into a course and we'll go over some course navigation. Um, before we do jump into a course, I'm um, just back on the dashboard page again. And I'll point out, um, we've got this published and unpublished courses. So this is actually similar to uh, Gaucho Space in that when you get, as an instructor, your academic course site, um, by default, it is hidden from students. And then you actively need to choose to make it shown to students when, once it's you know, been tweaked and ready to uh, be published and shown. Similar in Canvas, um, you're gonna get a course site if you're teaching an academic course um, and it'll be unpublished and then you as the instructor will need to decide when you want to publish it and once it's published students can then access it. Uh, one difference with Canvas, once you publish a course it can't be unpublished. Um, you're welcome to hide things in the course by unpublishing individual aspects of the course but the course itself um, can't be unpublished once it's been published. So just something to think about there. So I'll jump into our Canvas Basics sandbox. Um, and then you'll notice now we have this course navigation menu running along the side here uh, next to our global navigation menu. So when you first come into a course, by default, you'll be brought to the home page of the course. And the home page is really where you as the instructor get uh, flexibility and the ability to kind of personalize how the course is displayed, at least from the home page um, aspect. And to see those options, you would go to the right here and click on choose home page. And here you'll get the various options. Um, by default, we use the pages front page. Um, that's just a, a page in your course that we've set to be the home page. Um, the other options here are course activity stream, and I'll just run through these. So if I click course activity stream and click save, um, it's going to have just any recent, you know, activity in the course broken out by categories. Um, so this is both, um, you know, it's global to the course. So anything that's changing that students have access to. And then it's also um, personalized to the student. So if I'm a student in the course and I got a grade on a recent assignment, that would show up as one of the recent activities. Um, likewise, if someone posted to a discussion forum, um, I would see that note, that activity in this category. Um, so again, just a way as the homepage to see, you know, all the activity that's going on in the course as a way to access that. Uh, running list of activity. Um, the front page, again, I'll touch on that uh, when we get to pages, but this is that's just a page that we've set as the home page, and you can alter or add anything to that page, and that's what students would see on the home page. Um, course modules, um, this is going to be kind of closely mirroring the settings in Gaucho space where you have those um, sections by default. Um, by default, we populate weekly sections in Gaucho space. Um, the sections in Canvas are called modules, so you just have a running list of all the modules in the course. Um, so we've got, you know, our different modules. This is a course resources module. Then we've got week zero, week one, week two. 
Um, and then in the modules is all the content. So pages, um, we've got a discussion, assignment, quiz, um, just all that information. So again, this setting would make the home page that list of all the modules. And again, very similar to the default Gaucho space layout. The next one down, assignments list. If I choose this one, um, this is just going to have all the all the assignments for the course. Um, it's important to note that um, assignments, big A in Canvas, is anything that gets a grade in the course. So an assignment could be a quiz. It could also be a discussion. Um, it could also be kind of what we think of in Gaucho space as an assignment, where students are you know, writing in written text into an assignment and submitting that, or uploading a file, a Word doc, a PDF. Uh, what have you as an assignment, um, but all of those, um, you know, at ideas or activities, um, quizzes, discussions, assignments are all under the umbrella of assignments in Canvas. So anything that gets a grade, as well as external tools. So something like Eli Review, iClicker, GradeScope, those would all be here as well. Um, so again, this assignments list is going to have the home page just be all the list all the assignments in the course. And then lastly, we have the syllabus option. Um, this is a, you know, a separate aspect of the course. This in the menu, the course menu, you see syllabus below home page. Um, and it has an area where you can click edit and then you have this, you know, dialogue or a text box where you can you know, add your syllabus description, you know, grading policies, course outcomes, objectives, what have you. So it's got that area, and then it also has all the assignments and due dates uh, listed below it. So that's kind of pre pre set up for the course summary, and then you can upload um, syllabus information there. So that would be the home page would become the syllabus page. So again, you know, this really where you as an instructor get the flexibility to choose one of these options um, to kind of personalize how you want your course to look and feel. So that's our homepage. Um, I'm going to run through a couple more settings. And then um, as we go through the rest of the training, we'll touch on most of the other pertinent ones. Uh, the next one I'll touch on is the people page. Um, this is just how you can see a roster for your course. Um, so pretty standard. You've got a list of all the people in your course, students, TAs, instructors, they'd all be listed here. Um, I'll point out the column for section. Um, so this is helpful if you're um, teaching a course that has multiple sections, we'll populate those in, in the section column. And then you also have a tab here that will populate for sections. Um, and you can see those sections and the students uh, within them. As long as the TAs are added with the registrar, we'll populate their name into the section name, as well as you know, the meeting place and the time. Um, so all that information will be brought in. I'll point out also, um, in the event that you need to manually add someone, um, you know, primarily we encourage all TA should be brought in through the registrar, then they automatically get that access. But if you ever need to add someone manually, you can click on this plus people option, and then you'll get this pop-out window. Um, and to add someone, um, it's very important that you click on this login ID button. So that selects login ID. And the login ID in Canvas is someone's UCSB net ID. Um, so that's usually whatever email address um, is at ucsb.edu, the prefix to that. Um, that's their net ID, or for, in the student's case, it's usually the prefix before at umail. That would be someone's net ID. Um, the safest way to find someone's net ID is just to ask them what their net ID is, and then you can enter that here, um, choose their role that you want to add them to, um, section if you need to add them to a particular section then you would click next and they would get added to the course um, 
Again, one other caveat here, if the person has never logged into Canvas, um, they'll need to log in at least initially. That creates their account once they log in. Um, if they've never logged in, they don't have an account in Canvas, so they won't be able to be added. So once they log in, their account gets created, then you can add them through this process. Um, and again, just gonna harp on using login ID, using UCSB net ID, we don't use the email address option because there are, you know, everyone has multiple email addresses affiliated at UCSB. People have departmental email addresses. They have their at UCSB. Um, they can have, you know, multiple uh, at UCSB addresses. So it may not be the address you're familiar with that's associated with their account. And that's why we're going to use login ID because that's always going to be UCSB net ID. All right, the next setting I'll point out is the course settings. Um, it's the last one at the bottom. Um, most of the settings in here we populate um, automatically. So the course name is just gonna be brought in from the registrar. We're gonna add um, dates based on the quarter. But I'll point out this navigation tab. And this is where um, you can change how this at this uh, menu, this course menu on the side appears. So all of these um, tools that are listed here are tools that have been enabled for the course. And then below that, we have a whole list of other courses, or uh, sorry, other tools. And these can be enabled for the course. So something like GauchoCast, you know, an external tool that um, many instructors use, but you know, it's not something we put on by default. But if you want to use GauchoCast, you would just select it and then drag it up into this list of enabled tools at the top and then click on save and so now i've got GauchoCast in my course menu and it's been turned on for my course you know similarly with things like gradescope um, nectar um, zoom these external tools that maybe you want to use in your course but you know not everyone is necessarily going to use um, you would just drag them up and save to add them. All right, I'm gonna jump back to the home page and just also point out this student view. Um, you know, this is a really helpful tool. Um, if you've used the option in Gaucho Space, um, I'll say this one is a little more true to a student interaction with the course. Uh, the Gaucho Space one has a few video sequences. Um, this one, is going to be much more close to an actual student um, experience in the course. So it's a great way um, just to see, you know, is it everything you're expecting a student to see actually being seen by them? And we'll touch on kind of how that plays out once we start adding content to the course. All right, with that, I'm going to pass it to Samantha and we'll start talking about communication. Yeah, so Canvas has two main ways that you can communicate with students through the platform. The first is via course announcements, and this is very similar to instructor announcements in Gaucho Space. Great for the whole class communication or communication to a specific section or multiple sections. Canvas announcements are sent to students according to their notification preferences. And so by default, they're receiving an instant email to their email account. Um, but some students may come in and customize that, uh, enable push notifications to their smartphone, text messages, et cetera. They can also access announcements a few different ways in the Canvas platform. So they can see recent announcements at the top of the homepage here. They can also access all course announcements from the course navigation menu using the announcements link. If I click on the announcements link, I'll see all of the announcements that have been sent in reverse chronological order. So the newest ones will be at the top. To send a new announcement to your students, you would click uh, from the announcements tab, you would click plus announcements in the top right hand corner. And then it'll open up looking pretty similar to an email. Your topic title is the subject of the announcement. This would be the subject of the email that students would receive or the subject of the notification. And then in this description body, you would type in the full content of the announcement that you're trying to communicate out. 
I do want to draw your attention to this t uh, content editor uh, that Canvas has. This is called Canvas's Rich Content Editor. And it's an easy way for you to be able to format text so you can bold or highlight or change the size of texts. You can also insert links, embed images. One of the nice things here about images is you can, if you click on the image option, you can upload an image from your computer. But you also have access to Unsplash, which is copyright free images that you can embed. So if you have a long email and you want to break it up with an image um, uh, and you're you know, not too particular on the specific image that you want to add, you can always search for a term here using Unsplash, click on the image, and then that is a free image, copyright free, that you can embed right in your email notification to students. You can also record your message here. So you can record uh, you know, from your computer or record it directly in Canvas. Maybe instead of typing out a long email, you just want to create a short video for students to watch. All of that can be done using Canvas's rich content editor. And this editor you'll see in several other places that we walk through today in Canvas. Whenever you're essentially editing content in Canvas, so you're creating assignment instructions or you're writing content in Canvas, you will have access to this content editor to help you format or in so media. As you scroll down your announcement, once you have your subject and your description, you'll see the various different options available to you. So the post to option is determining who this is being sent to. Again, announcements are in general to the entire class or to specific or multiple sections. So by default, it's sending to all of my students, but I can click and send it to just the students in Katie's class, for example. I can also choose to attach, uh, add an attachment for students to download. The final options that are available when you're crafting your announcement is the option to delay posting. Uh, this allows you to create the uh, notification of the announcement on Friday afternoon, for example, uh, but then have it be sent to students at a specific date and time that you specify. So for example, I can type this on Friday, uh, and then have it hit students' inboxes and available on the platform at Sunday at 6 p.m. You can also allow users to publicly comment. Uh, so maybe you want your students to be able to reply to this announcement. You want your TAs or other students to be able to answer those questions or provide comments. This would allow your users to comment. If you're adding your uh, announcement using audio, you can enable a podcast feed. And you can also allow students to like or give your announcement a, a thumbs up, maybe a way to track engagement with your announcement. Once you click save, this would be sent immediately uh, and visible in the platform, uh, or it would go at the time at which you'd specified in the delay posting option. So again, announcements, that first way, very similar to an instructor announcement in Gaucho space, whole class, whole group communication. The second way that you can send communication through Canvas is using the inbox feature. This is part of the global navigation that Gus talked about first. If I click on the inbox, it'll give me access to my Canvas inbox. I can now search for individual courses here and see any communication that's been sent to me uh, in this inbox. I can click on a conversation, read it, and click to reply back to this specific student. You can also uh, filter in a few different ways. You know, you can look at just your unread messages, any messages that you've sent, or any archived messages. To compose a new inbox message, uh, you'd click this compose a new message here button uh, in kind of the center of the screen. And then again, looking very similar to an email. Similar to announcements, students will receive conversations sent from the inbox to their email by default, and they can use their account settings to customize those notifications if they'd prefer to receive it uh, in an, a different or in an additional way, such as a push notification or a text message. One nice thing about the inbox is, uh, in addition to being able to send it to all students in the class or to specific sections, you can also send inbox conversations to specific students or to small groups of students. So here in the two box, for example, I can choose to send this to just one specific student in my class, search for their name, can add in a subject, type in the description, 
include optional file or media and click send. And Joe then would receive this uh, according to his notification preferences and he would be able to see it in Canvas as well from his inbox. Uh, you can add additional members here. So I can search for additional users here if I'm looking uh, you know, I can type in Katie and I can click on Katie. And now this message would be going to Joe and Katie. And I can use this address book feature to the right hand side to search for individual users. So I can quickly add all students in the class. And maybe I want to CC both of my TAs. I can click on teaching assistants and add in both of my teaching assistants. Uh, I can search for all students, sections, groups, et cetera. So the nice thing again about inboxes is that it allows you to send communication not only to the entire class or to specific sections, but it also allows you uh, to communicate individually with students as well as in small groups. I do want to draw your attention to one specific setting in the inbox conversations, which is this send an individual message to each recipient. So by default, when you've selected more than one user, uh, so here, for example, I've selected Joe and Katie. It's going to send this notification as a group message. Both Joe and Katie are going to see uh, that one another are on the thread. And if Joe sends a reply, that reply is going to go back to me and it's going to go back to Katie. If I'm sending something sensitive in nature uh, or something where I don't want folks to know who else is receiving this message, similar to like a BCC in an email, I would choose this option to send an individual message to each recipient. Now, once I've selected that option, if I send this message to Joe and Katie, it's sending an individual message to Joe and an individual message to Katie. They won't be able to see that one another received it. And if Joe responds, that response is only coming back to me. Katie doesn't see it. Uh, so again, that's your inbox notification, that second way to send communication. Uh, it also gets to sent similar to announcements to students by their notifications, default email, uh, but it allows for the one-on-one -on -one or one to a small group communication. Uh, so up next, Gus is going to talk about, now that we've talked about communication, Gus is gonna talk about how to create content in Canvas. All right, so yeah, I've given you some navigation, communication tools. Um, now we'll get into actually adding things to your course site. Um, so back from on the home page here, um, to you know, add content, um, the easiest way is to go to this modules page. Um, so I click on modules in the course navigation, and then I'm brought really into the course you know, view that again is similar to the default course view in Gaucho space where I've got these different sections, which in Canvas we call modules, and then the content within each module. Um, so modules are flexible. They can be, you know, thematic um, based on the materials in them. You know, like this one, we've got course resources, we've got the syllabus, a page on how to be successful in this class, a page on library resources. Um, you could also use them as, you know, weekly modules. So we've got week zero here. We've got content asking students to do before and then after class. Um, but you could also use modules, you know, to group, say, all the discussions in one module, all the quizzes in another module. Um, you know, really up to you how you want to organize uh, this, you know, this content uh, for your particular course. So. In the event I want to add a module, the easiest way to do so is up on the upper right, uh, click on plus module. And I'll just make a week three. So I've got my title for my module. Um, just a couple other settings here. I can set a lock until date. So um, if you want, you know, only students to have access to, you know, a particular module um until you, you want them to get access after a certain date you can set that here um, so maybe you want students to get access to the next week on the sunday before you can dial that setting in here um, another you know aspect of just limiting or metering out access to a module you can create uh, requirements for a module so this is week three um, in week two i can say you know 
in the settings for the module, I can make a requirement that students submit, you know, the assignment in a week two, and then that module for week two is marked as complete. And then I could add a prerequisite um, for, you know, week three module, and I can say, you know, week two has to be completed before they can get access to week three. Um, so again, just if you're looking for limiting access based on, you know, a date or, you know, finishing something from a previous module that those options are available. In this case, I'm just going to have it, you know, not locked down by any means. Um, and I've got it now at the bottom of my list of modules. So next, if I want to add material into this module, um, I can click on the plus sign on the right side of the module here. And then from here, I can add, you know, any content type um, into that module. So I can do an assignment, a quiz, um, upload a file, add a page, um, add a discussion. I can also add a text header. And that's what we were seeing when it said uh, before class, after class. Text header is a great way to break up material in a module and to give kind of context to, um, you know, is this, are you, have like a bunch of readings, you might want to put a text header at the top that says, you know, readings for the week. And then maybe another text header for, you know, the assignments, if there's going to be a, maybe an assignment and a quiz for the week. Um, so after text header, I've got external URL. If I need to link to somewhere outside of Canvas, I can add a URL. And then external tools, um, you know, something like eLib Review, iClicker, um, Google Assignment, any kind of thing that's you know attached to Canvas, uh, but is an outside tool that you know we've configured. So I can add any of these content types. So I'll just do a couple quick examples. So if I do assignment, anytime I'm creating something new, I want to check this option for create new. You know, in this case, assignment. If I'm adding a new file, it would be create file. Um, but you'll notice when I click assignment, I also have these ones here. Um, these are already created, but they haven't been added to a module. Um, so I could add, you know, either of these, but I'm just going to make a new assignment. So I'll call it week three journal. And then I'll add item. Um, and I'll just do a few more here. So let's say I'll have a page and I'm just going to have, you know, on that page, um, maybe I'm going to list a bunch of readings. Um, for the week. And then I'll add a discussion as well. And then following that similar pattern, um, I'll add some text headers. Um, I'll just follow that model of before class and after class. So as I'm adding all of these things, it's just adding them you know, in the order I add them. So the newest one is at the bottom. Um, but I can organize this content just by uh, dragging and dropping. So before class, I'll just move this one up here. Um, after class, drag this one up here. You know, I want students to do the readings before class and this week three journal. Um, and then after class, they're gonna do this discussion. So, you know, obviously I could add more, but here's kind of a basic module. Um, at the top of the page, um, I again have that student view option. Um, so if I click on student view, and I scroll down, I actually see I can't see week three. Um, that's because I haven't actually published the module. Um, you'll notice all of these modules and the activities within them have that green check mark. Um, so that just indicates that it's published. Um, so when I create anything in Canvas and I want students to access it, it needs to be published. If I click on the module to publish it, it actually cascades down and everything beneath it also gets um, published. But, you know, let's say this week three readings, um, you know, I haven't finished adding the content to that page and maybe I don't want students to see it, I could unpublish it. Um, that allows me, you know, I can tinker with that page and then when I'm ready, go back and publish it. And that way students aren't, you know, seeing a blank page. Um, I'll also point out, uh, I'll use this first one as an example. 
If I click on syllabus, say, you know, again, from a student perspective, um, you know, the, the file for the syllabus would open. And then I can click on this in the bottom right next, and that's just going to progress me through the module. So anything that's in that module, it's just going to bring me through each piece in the order it's in. So then I'm brought to the how to be successful page, and I can see all that content, and I can move on to the next one or move to the previous aspect of the module. Um, and I can also go back to the modules page and just see all that content. Um, and again, I touched on pages briefly, but a, you know, a page is really just where you as an instructor get, you know, a blank page where you can add all the content you'd like. Here we've got, you know, a bunch of text all about how, you know, students can be successful in this course. Um, so, you know, we set a home page that's blank by default, um, this front page, and you as the instructor can go in and edit, you know, you would you know, change this to whatever the name of your course is, you know, add whatever content you want on that page. And by default, that's the home page. All right, so that's a quick rundown on modules. Um, again, we're building content from this kind of, you know, bird's eye perspective looking at the course. Uh, you'll notice as I made the assignment for week three and the week three discussion, um, I didn't actually you know, dial in any of the settings. So I didn't set, you know, a due date for the week three journal or how many points it's worth or, you know, our students, you know, typing their answer into Canvas for the assignment or they uploading a file for the assignment. All of that would need to be done in the assignment itself. So I could click on, uh, click on the assignment, go into it, and then dial in those settings. Um, really, when you're building from the modules page, as I just did, um, you know, you're kind of just building out the skeleton of the course. Uh, you're not dialing in all those settings. Um, so one other thing, one other aspect of how you can add content to your course that I'll touch on is if you want to build or bring in content from your Gaucho Space course. So if you have a Gaucho Space course that you, you taught before and you want to bring in that content, um, there's actually a way to do that. So let me open up a Gaucho Space course here, just a sec. So here, you know, I've got uh, a Gaucho Space course site. Um, I've got, you know, my general section, and I've got some other sections with content in them. Um, so if I want to create a backup of this course, to then bring it into Canvas, what I would do is go to the administration block here. And I click on this option for backup, you know, right in the middle of the administration block. Backup. Um, if I want to bring everything over, when you get to this page, I would just, you know, you can just click on jump to final step. Um, it'll capture everything in the course and create a file backup. If you want to parse out what certain content you want to bring in, you can click on next. And then um, you'll be shown each kind of individual piece of the course. And then you can, you know, select none or leave it select all and just unselect the things you don't want to bring in. Um, and then just progress through the backup uh, steps to create that file. Once you've created the file, uh, you'll be brought to a page like this where you click download and this will download the file to your um, computer. And then you can go into your Canvas course, the homepage on your Canvas site in the upper right hand, you would click on import existing content. Um, for content type, you'd use the drop down and select Moodle. And then here for uh, source, click on choose file, find where you had that um, download from Gaucho Space um, on your computer, select that file. Um, for default question bank, we generally recommend just creating a new question bank. Um, I recommend just labeling it, you know, imported from Gaucho Space. That way, you know, in your question bank in the course, you can clearly see, you know, what questions you brought in. Um, Again, you know, you should probably just, 
you know, parse out what content you want on the backup side of things in Gaucho space. And then when you get to this step, just check all content and then go ahead and click import. Um, it'll take, you know, depending on the size of the course, a few minutes for it to process. And then once it's processed, you can go back to the modules page and you'll see all the content that you, you know, backed up and restored from Gaucho space and brought into Canvas. Um, and you'll just, you know, note that any sections that were in Gaucho space will be brought in as modules and then all the content within those sections in Gaucho space will be housed in those modules. Um, and then, you know, there's some, my, some adjustments um, depending on how you use Gaucho space. Um, some adjustments will need to be done depending on what content you're bringing over. Um, in the description of this video, we have a link to the uh, backup and restore process. And it also touches on some of the kind of nuances and things that might have to be adjusted uh, once you do it a restore into Canvas from Gaucho space. So that touches on, again, how you add content, you know, both from within Canvas and from, you know, bringing content from Gaucho space. Um, Samantha is going to take it from here and go over um, some of the settings within the content types. Yeah. So again, regardless of if you built the assignments and the activities within the modules page, or if you created a backup from Gaucho Space and imported it, it in to Canvas, at some point you're going to want to come in and set your due dates and change how many points things are worth. Uh, and so a few different ways that you can do that. We're going to focus on the various different settings and options available for assignments, discussions, and quizzes. To start off assignments, if I click on assignments from the course navigation menu, It'll take me to my assignments index page, which will list all of my assignments from the modules page that I created. So this will include any assignments. Uh, so we saw Gus, for example, create that week three journal assignments as we think of them from Gaucho space, things where students are uploading files. But the assignments page will also include things like graded discussions or quizzes, anything that has an assignment, a grade attached to it will appear on this assignments page. I can also create new assignments from the assignment page by clicking plus assignment and then link them to the modules page uh, Create uh, when I click on the plus sign next to the module and add in that existing assignment. But in this case, uh, we saw Gus uh, create that week three journal and we wanna go ahead and we wanna start in to add in and edit those settings. To do that, I'll click on week three journal and I'll click on edit in the top right hand corner. This will open up the assignment detail section where I can uh, update the assignment name. I can use Canvas's rich content editor to add in description of the assignment, instructions for students. And again, you can edit that format. You can insert images. You can link to external websites or embed a video, for example. And as I scroll down, it'll take me to uh, all of the different settings that are available for Canvas assignments. The first setting is points. This is how many points you're going to grade this out of. Uh, so for example, I can enter in a 10 here, and now I'd be grading this week three journal, and it would be worth 10 points. I can also change the display grade. This is how grades are going to be entered and displayed to students. I have points. So in this case, I would be entering in, you know, nine out of 10, 8.5 out of 10. But I can also choose to enter and display grades to students as percentages. So 75%, 85%, complete, incomplete. So full credit, no credit. I can choose to enter grades as a letter grade. So instead of saying, you know, seven and a half, I'm saying, C plus or B minus. I can enter a GPA scale or I can choose that this assignment is not graded. As I scroll down, I'll see a few different options available in the assignment setting. Uh, the one of particular importance is the submission type. This is deciding how students will submit their assignment. You have a few different options here. The first option is no submission. 
This is simply creating a column in the grade book, very similar to a manual grade item in Gaucho Space. Students aren't uploading their files to Canvas. Rather, it's a place for you to be able to record grades, um, but it doesn't correspond to an online activity. A great example of this is something like participation or maybe an oral assessment where students aren't necessarily submitting something, um, but you do need a place to enter their grade into Canvas. As I go down, there are a few other uh, probably more popular submission types. Uh, online means that it's something that students are submitting to Canvas. They're submitting their final submission. And once I select that option, I have various different options for students to submit it. Text entry means they're typing their response directly into Canvas. Uh, great for those shorter responses. Website URL means students are pasting in a URL. Media recording means that students are uploading a video of themselves or uh, audio. Student annotation means that students are downloading a file that I've uploaded, uh, annotating that document and re-uploading it. And file upload uh, is where students are uploading a document. So this could be a PowerPoint, uh, it could be an Excel spreadsheet, it could be a PDF or a Word doc, and you can restrict upload file types if you're only looking for specific types of files. So for example, for my week three journal, uh, I do want students to submit this online through Canvas, and I want them to upload a file, uh, a PDF, DocX file, um, and so I have those options here selected. Additional settings in the assignments for Canvas is the ability to restrict submission attempts, uh, set the assignment as a group assignment, as well as require peer review. So if I want students to workshop, maybe receive two other students' submissions and provide feedback or comments on their, uh, provide peer feedback, I can choose to have that as an available option. The assign section is where I'll be able to set the Canvas due date. This will automatically appear on students' calendars. It triggers those notifications if they have it enabled in their uh, notifications account. Pro, uh, profile. I can set it. So for example, maybe my week three journal is due on February or on September 16th. I can change the time as well, but I, I'll give students until the end of the day on September 16th. In the assign section, I can also choose the available from date. So this is the date at which students can start to submit their uh, week three journal. And I can set an until date, and this is the cutoff date, very similar to Gaucho Space. This allows you to decide, you know, after this date, students can no longer uh, upload files to the platform. So, for example, I can set my due date to September 16th, which is a Friday, and I can set my until date to September 18th. Anything students submit within that window so, for example, if a student uploads a file on September 17th, uh, that'll be marked as late in the platform. Uh, after the until date, so after September 18th at 11.59, students will no longer be able to upload anything. So it allows you to decide kind of what is the window where you're going to be accepting late submissions and where is it kind of past due. You can also set alternate due dates for specific students or for sp specific sections by selecting the add button. So if, for example, I can say, you know, for everyone, this is the due date, but I'm going to grant Sarah an extension. I can set Sarah's alternate due date to be Sunday, for example. And so now Sarah has this due date and everyone else in the class has this one. So the ads allows you to provide flexible due dates for individual students or for individual sections. Once I click save, I'll see a summary of those settings, you know, how many points it's out of, what students are submitting, relevant due dates uh, here in my week three journal assignment. So again, the assignments page is a great place for you to be able to edit or add in those additional settings for your assignments that you've created on the modules page. Uh, and you'll notice here that we've kind of grouped these assignments into different categories or assignment groups as Canvas calls them. So we have this assignments Canvas group, a participation and attendance Canvas group, quizzes and midterms. Gus will go over how to create these groups and how you can wait 
uh, individual groups or categories according to your syllabus when we get to the grading aspect of today's presentation. The next activity type that I want to talk about, uh, the various settings that are available to you, is discussions. Uh, so again, any graded discussions will appear here on your assignments page, but you might also have some ungraded discussions, maybe a place for students to ask questions uh, or communicate with their peers, maybe form groups. And so I can see all of my discussions on the discussions index page. If I click discussions, here from the course navigation, I'll now see all of my discussions. Uh, Canvas breaks up discussions into three different sections. So I have my pinned discussions here at the top uh, and I can choose, these are discussions that I've indicated as particularly important to the course. Discussions I want to always appear at the top of the page for students. And I can drag up discussions and indicate them as pinned using this dot, dot, dot on the right-hand corner, I can unpin. So this allows you to kind of decide the order in which these discussions are appealing to students uh, with pin discussions always being at the top of the page. We also have the main discussions page, which will be ordered by recent activity. And at the bottom, we have our closed for comments. These are discussions where uh, the comments are over, students are no longer actively engaging with them, they're no longer able to respond or reply. Uh, you can mark as closed for comment so that they're read only. If I click on a discussion, so I have this introduce yourself discussion, uh, I can quickly see any unread replies and all replies. And then again, if I click on it, I'll see uh, all of my student responses here with the option to reply to that individual thread. You can edit a discussion. So we saw Gus create that week three discussion. So I can click on that discussion and click edit to access all of the settings, set the due date, et cetera. And I can also create discussions uh, from the discussion index page by clicking this plus discussion in the top right hand corner. As I click edit or uh, create a new discussion, It'll allow me to provide access, and this looks, again, very similar to the assignments interface, to the announcement interface. You have that title and the description where you can include uh, all of your instructions with your Canvas rich content editor. And as I scroll down, I have my various discussion options. I can choose who this discussion is applicable to. I can choose to include an attachment for students to download. I can allow threaded replies. Uh, this is a really nice option if you have students who are going to be responding to their peers. Uh, it makes for a nice organizational scheme where you know students have an initial post and then they can reply, other students can reply to that initial post and it threads itself. So it allows for a really natural, easy to organize, uh, easy to read conversation style. Another option that is frequently used is the users must post before seeing reply. This is most similar to the Q&A feature in Gaucho Space. It allows the user uh, that the student must submit an initial post before they can reply to their peers. You can also enable a podcast feed uh, and allow liking. Those were two settings that were available in the announcements uh, feature of Canvas. You can choose whether or not this is a graded discussion. And once I select grades, I now have the option to choose how many points is this out of and how do I wanna enter those points as well as set an applicable due date uh, for individual students or for sections or for the entire class. I do wanna draw your attention to the, this is a group discussion option. So for classes that have many sections, for our large lecture classes with lots of different sections, uh, if you want students to only be able to see and respond and post to the students in their particular section, you can do that by marking that this is a group discussion and setting your group set to sections. Now, once I've enabled this setting, if I'm in Katie's 5 p.m. section, I can only post and interact and see the replies and responses from students in Katie's 5 p.m. section. I won't have access to Chris's 9 a.m. section. Uh, I'm kind of, it helps 
break out the larger lecture class into smaller group sets where students are interacting with a much smaller uh, number of students. So again, once you click save, you'll see a summary of all of those settings. Uh, and for example, I set this as a group discussion and now each group has its own conversation for the topic. So here's Katie's thread and here's Steve's thread. The final activity type that we're going to talk about is the quizzes activity type. Uh, we're not going to go into too much depth here because we have an entire training that we'll link to on quizzes. But do note that you have a similar option that you had for assignments and discussions, the ability to create quizzes or edit existing quizzes and set similar settings to Gaucho Space, the ability to set a time limit uh, and allow restrict what students can see and can't see after they uh, take their quiz. So again, we'll link to the quizzes, uh, additional training, an entire training devoted to quizzes, quiz questions, quiz question banks, but did just wanna note that this activity type is available in Canvas uh, should you be interested in using quizzes in your courses. So now that you've created content, you've added your settings, added your due dates, added your point values, uh, it's now time for Gus to go over how to grade these assignments. All right. So, yeah, when it comes to grading, um, what's nice about Canvas is that there's a universal grading interface um, in Canvas. It's called SpeedGrader. So whether it be a, you know, what we think of typically with an assignment where students are either typing in a response right into Canvas as their submission or uploading a file, that kind of assignment, or it's a discussion forum, um, or if you're manually grading a quiz, um, all of those activity types um, when it comes to grading will be done in that speed grader interface. So as an example, I'll open up our week zero reflection um, assignment. So I've got the assignment and then in the top right to get into the grading interface, I would click on speed grader. So this opens it up. Um, I'm going to toggle to a student with a submission here. So running along the top here, um, I can use this option to get to the grade book. Um, I can use this option to, you know, delay posting of the grades. Uh, this has some, you know, additional options, keyboard shortcuts for grading. This lets me know what assignment I'm grading um, here in this window. Over on the right, um, you know, some other, how many I've graded, the average out of how many. And then here I've got the student that I'm actually looking at their submission for. Um, I can toggle between students using these arrows. And then I can also use this drop down menu to select a particular student. Um, in the event your course has sections, you can use this pop out menu. And then, you know, especially for TAs when it comes to their grading, they can select their specific section so they're not trying to hunt down all their specific students. They can just um, filter out only the students in their section. So in the actual grading interface here, we've got some options. Um, this option to download the file. In this case, a student submitted a file for their submission. I can download it. I can also rotate it, zoom in and out, go to a, a full screen view. And then I can get into the actual annotation tools available in SpeedGrader. So this point one um, is a point annotation. So if I want to, you know, maybe highlight a specific area and then add a comment about that, I can do so here. Um, this one is a highlighting tool, so I can, you know, highlight specific text that's been included. Um, can also add a comment attached to it. Uh, this one is just a text box, so I can, you know, add a text box and then enter a comment in there. The next one, a strike through option, so I can strike through text. Um, what's nice with the highlighting and the strike through option, it does a pretty good job of capturing the text and then, you know, attaching that highlight or the strike through to that text. Uh, this paintbrush tool, um, you know, you can select 
color and then draw, you know, freehand highlighting an area. And then the last one, um, this is just an option to like, you know, drag a box around a specific area of the submission and you can also leave a comment attached to that box you've drawn. So those are the, you know, the Canvas built-in annotation tools. Um, over on the right side here, you know, all this is somewhat similar to the layout of grading in Gaucho space um, for an assignment. This is where you'd input the grade. So depending on what settings um, kind of that Samantha covered when it comes to the assignment, what grading settings you've set, you would enter the applicable uh, grade type and number or letter, or however the grading is set here. And then below that, we've got comments for this attempt. Um, in Gaucho space, the area for these kind of whole submission comments, um, it was just one comment. Um, in Canvas, you can actually um, add multiple comments like this. Uh, so I can say good for good intro paragraph, submit, and then I can add you know additional comments after that. So I don't have to have one comment that has all of my you know feedback on the side here. And then some other options, I can attach a file, uh, I can do a video recording, and I can also give some audio feedback if those options um, are needed. So again, this is you know a quick run through of the grading interface using SpeedGrader. Um, next, I'm going to jump into the gradebook in Canvas, you know, where those grades would funnel into. So in this grades tab in the course navigation, um, I get to, you know, somewhat familiar uh, spreadsheet style view of the gradebooks where I've got students running along the left here and then the assignments for the course running along the top. Um, Kind of some orientation here, these dashes, that just means there hasn't been a grade given for this assignment for these students. Um, this little page icon, um, that means that this student has submitted this assignment, but a grade hasn't been given. Um, in this case, you know, grades are showing up, grades have been given for these students for this assignment. Uh, you'll notice this green highlight over here. Um, this is a default setting in Canvas. Um, if you go to view and you go to statuses, um, you know, these different highlights constitute, you know, what those correspond to. So a late submission would be highlighted blue, this one missing, resubmitted, dropped, excused. Uh, those highlights let you know those submissions. So we've got, again, you know, the, the assignment types, and I can also see the points or whatever grades out of um, are associated with them running along the top. So out of 100, out of 2, out of 5, out of 20. And then at the end here, I've got these assignments, participation and attendance, weekly quizzes, midterm. Um, these aren't, no, there's no points associated with these, and these actually correspond to those assignment groups um, that Samantha touched on earlier. So again, these operate very similarly to gradebook categories in Gaucho space in Canvas, their assignment groups. So this tells us, you know, this student is getting 100% of the assignments group and 100% of the participation and attendance. They haven't gotten any grade for the weekly quizzes or the midterm, um, but it's just giving us a percentage of each of those groups. And then at the end here, we've got the total, the course total, how that's being you know, calculated based on all the assignments. Without using points, it's just going to calculate, or sorry, without using weights, it's just going to calculate the total based on all the points available in the course. So that's kind of the a layout of the spreadsheet view of the gradebook. I'll run through some settings in the gradebook. Uh, at the top here, we've got this gradebook dropdown. Um, learning mastery, you know, that's really pertains more to um, K through 12 kind of uh, uses of Canvas. Um, the ones that I'll point out is individual gradebook. This gives you the option to view the gradebook as a particular student in your course. So if you're trying to sleuth out the student is saying they're seeing you know, one thing and you wanna see exactly how they're seeing the gradebook, you can use this option. And then gradebook history, this gives you kind of all the grade changes in the gradebook. So you want to see, oh, you know, I think I changed someone's grade. 
is there a way I can go see what it was before I changed it? You can use gradebook history to kind of see that running list of changes in the gradebook. Uh, the next one, view. Um, this setting really just changes how the gradebook in this you know page is shown to you. So you can change how you know it's arranged. Um, this one I think is really helpful for um, courses with sections. You can add a filter for sections. And then in the top right here, you'll have a drop down menu where again you can sort by those individual sections in the course. You know, really helpful for TAs when they want to see just the gradebook for their sections for the students that uh, are under their section. And then there's also an option for columns. Um, so you can sort, if you don't want to see unpublished assignments, you can see that. Um, I'll also point out this notes column. This adds a column right after the student name. Um, and it's just this notes, you can add in notes about the student. Um, this is a good way to capture information about, you know, how that student, you know, if you want to capture something about their participation in the course, um, you know, maybe something they're really active in their discussion section, um, but there really isn't a grade necessarily attached to it, but you just want to make note of something, you can enter it here. Um, the notes you enter are just instructor and TA facing. Um, they're not going to, so none of this information in the notes tab is shown to students. Um, one other, um, uh, where is it? Sorry. sorry, the next one I'll point out is actions, um, importing and exporting the gradebook. Um, this is, you know, useful at the end of the quarter when you need to export the gradebook for, you know, import into eGrades. If you also need to import grades into the gradebook, um, you can do so here as well. And then lastly, on the far right, um, there's this cog for the other gradebook settings here. There's late policies if you automatically want to apply a grade for missing submissions. So if a student some misses a submission due date, if you automatically want to give a zero, um, you can you know, give whatever percentage you'd like. Um, another option, you can automatically apply a deduction for late submissions. So if you want to deduct a certain percentage for each day it's late, you can do that. You can also set a floor on how low that uh, late deduction will go. Next one, grading grade posting policy. Um, by default, it's set to automatically post grades. So that just means as you enter grades, they become visible to students. The other option here is manually post grades. So that means you would enter grades for the assignment as you're grading them, but they aren't actually shown to students until you actively choose to post those grades. So again, default, you enter a grade, students can see that grade. If you choose this option for manually post grades, as you enter them, they aren't made automatically visible. You have to choose to then post the grades, and then they become visible to students. So this setting is globally for the course as a whole. So this means that any assignment um, would then have this policy where you enter grades and then you post them when you want to and they're shown to students. Um, you can also set this on a course or an assignment by assignment basis. So if you have say a midterm that you don't want grades kind of trickling out, you want all the midterm grades posted at one time, um, you could set this setting in a particular assignment and leave it as automatically post grades for the rest of the assignments by default. The last one here, advanced allow final grade override. Um, this is going to allow you the flexibility to change um, the final grade that's computed in the gradebook. So if you need that flexibility where you know you don't want to have to alter other grades to change how the final grade is computed, this gives you that option just to change how the final grade is. Um, set. All right, so again, quick rundown of the gradebook. I'm going to next jump into the assignment groups that again, um, kind of showed briefly. So if I go to assignments, I again have all these groups. Um, to make a new group, I'll make one um, for the final say. So I'll add, do this plus group. I'll call it final. 
And then at the bottom of the list, now I've got a new assignment group for the final. Um, so maybe there's multiple parts to my final. And I'll do a part final part two. So now, you know, theoretically, I've got all my different assignment groups. Um, if I want to assign weights to these, I would then go click on the top right three dots here. And I'd use this assignments groups weight. Then I get this pop-up window where then I'm going to choose to use uh, weights to determine the final grade. So I check that box. And then, you know, I can change, alter any of these percentages for all the different assignment groups. Um, for the final, I'll say 30%. So I've got my full 100% accounted for my various assignment groups. I then click Save. And now those weights are associated with each assignment group in the, in the course. So if I go back to the gradebook now, and it doesn't change anything you know, listing with these assignments, but at the very end where I have my assignment groups, I can see those percentages um, associated with those assignment groups. Um, again, you know, the grade book is probably where we get the most um, support needs. Understandably, it can be pretty complex depending on your grading scheme. Um, so we definitely recommend, you know, reaching out to us for help um, if you have questions about the grade book. And uh, you know we can set up a console or at least give you instructions pertaining to your syllabus, uh, how to make that mirror your grading policy in Canvas. Um, so on that note, I'll just kick it to Samantha and we'll touch on the other ways you can get help uh, using Canvas. Yeah, so we've talked about quite a bit here. We did wanna spend just a few minutes talking about additional help and support moving forward. Uh, so in that global navigation menu, there is access to this help menu, which provides you quick access to the Canvas guides. These are super helpful for specific features. So for example, if you're like, you know, I can't remember something about an announcement, you can click on announcement and see, you know, how do I delete an announcement? How do I attach a file, et cetera? You also have access to 24-7 Canvas support, uh, and that comes by calling in the hotline. You can chat with a support agent, or you can send them uh, a ticket by opening a Canvas support ticket. And this provides you, again, 24-7 access to Canvas experts uh, to help you answer any questions that you have about Canvas. For UCSB-specific support, uh, on the login page or canvas.ucsb website right next to the login page there's this support tab which provides you additional options for getting uh, help and support from UCSB. So we do have UCSB specific guides uh, in our help center which walks through you know how do you create a backup of a gaucho space course and import it into Canvas? How do you add a user with UCSB net ID? As well as detailed help guides on all of our existing external doc, uh, integrations. So if you're looking to integrate Gradescope with Canvas or iClicker with Canvas, uh, detailed step-by-step -step guides for UCSB specific external integrations into Canvas. And then as you scroll down, again, lots of additional trainings coming up over the next uh, academic year, we'll post those in the upcoming training session. But we are also here to help. Uh, so please, as Gus mentioned, if you're wondering, you know, you'd like some tailored one-on-one -on -one support uh, to help a workflow get developed into Canvas, if you need specific help on your gradebook, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at help at collaborate.ucsb.edu. We can schedule a consultation to look at your course together and answer any questions or concerns that you may have. So thank you for your time here today. Uh, I know that this we covered quite a bit uh, and we look forward to uh, helping you uh, use Canvas in the future. Thank you. Thank you.